summer is coming. And when it does, that giant yellow ball of dragon fire will once again seek to destroy our comfort by viciously increasing the temperature in our castle to intolerable levels. Until now, our only defense has been to invoke the ice magic of the cold air blowing boxes. Alas, ice magic is expensive. So in order to save a few gold pieces this year, I'm going to install window shades. But I only want the shades to cover the windows for those few hours in the morning when the dragon fire is blazing down upon us. So that means my shades need to be automated. The important components of this project are these high torque geared DC motors. This H-Bridge motor controller, some push buttons, a D1 Mini, and of course, Home Assistant. Um, I suppose the actual shades count as important too. To make the shades, I'm going to use some blackout fabric, some 3 quarter inch conduit, skateboard bearings, and a few 3D printed parts. Shove a bearing into one end of the conduit. If it doesn't quite fit, cut some relief slots in the conduit, and then smash it in there. Measure out the fabric and secure it to the conduit. Glue it, tape it, weld it, whatever. I made this little 3D printed part to fit inside the bearing, then fasten to the wall. The other side of the conduit is going to be connected to the motor shaft. This 3D printed part fits on the motor shaft and then into the end of the conduit. I'm also going to drill a hole and put a screw through it to make sure the shaft and the conduit stay secured together. The motor and the other electronic parts are going to live in these cute little 3D printed houses. These are 12 volt motors and the motor controller has a voltage converter that outputs 5 volts. We can use that to power the D1 Mini. So for power, we just need to get 12 volts to the controller. So I guess add a 12 volt power supply to the parts list. The controller, the D1 Mini, and the buttons fit in the housing like this. Here's a diagram showing the connections to the D1 Mini. To wire it all up, take 12 volts from the power supply to the motor controller. This motor controller can actually control two motors. You don't have to use two motors, but I'm going to on some of my windows that are close together. The connectors on the sides of the controller go to the motors. The IN1 and IN2 pins are the control signals for motor 1. IN3 and IN4 are the control pins for motor 2. We power the D1 Mini from the terminal labeled 5 volts. And then we connect the push buttons to the D1 Mini and to ground. For the software, I'm going to use ESP Home. If you've never used ESP Home or Home Assistant, then here's a couple video references to get you up to speed. In short, Home Assistant is an open source smart home hub. And ESP Home is a way for people with no real programming experience like me, to program Wi-Fi based microcontrollers to do all kinds of amazing stuff in their smart home. What I love about ESP Home is that it works seamlessly with Home Assistant. Once you've written your ESP Home device file and uploaded it, everything you've created will almost instantly appear in Home Assistant. No need to edit the Home Assistant config file at all. Also, because ESP Home can communicate directly with Home Assistant, you don't even need to use MQTT. And finally, once you have a basic ESP Home sketch on your microcontroller, you can edit the file and upload the changes over the air. All hail Odo Winter. Amazing work, my friend. Thank you. 
In ESP Home, as of right now, there isn't a component for this particular motor controller. But with some finagling, we can get it to work. Let's walk through the ESP Home file. This top part is all the setup, Wi-Fi connection, etc. Then I'm setting four of the GPIOs as outputs. If you're only going to control one motor, then you really only need two of these. The next part creates switches and assigns each switch to one of the output pins we just set up in the first part. I'm also going to give each switch an ID. That's so we can include some aspects of the automation inside the ESP Home sketch. But we'll get to that in a minute. Next, we'll set up a physical button that will control the shade in the rare event that someone wants to control these beautiful smart shades in the dumb old-fashioned way. I'm controlling two shades, so I need an entry for each push button. In ESP Home, buttons like this are binary sensor entities. The platform is GPIO, and we define which pin the button will be connected to. The resting state of these pins is high or on. I want the resting state to be low or off, so that's what filters invert does. Now we define what happens when we press the button. This is a super cool part of ESP Home. You can actually include templates and automations right here in the sketch that will be loaded on the D1 Mini. The best part about that is that automations you define here in the ESP Home sketch will still work even if your Wi-Fi goes down or if Home Assistant isn't running. <laughs> like that ever happens. In ESP Home, a Lambda is where we build our in-sketch automations. I'm going to spend a couple extra minutes explaining how the Lambda works because if you really want to unlock the magic of a DIY smart home, you've got to be able to make automations. In the Lambda for the buttons, this is what's happening. First, we say if the cover entity, which we haven't defined yet, but we will in just a minute. If that entity is in the open state, then it looks at the next if statement, which says, is motor pin 1 on? If the cover is open, and motor pin 1 is on, then the shade is moving. So we send the stop command to that cover. The else statement here is what will happen if the first if is true, meaning the cover is open, but the second if is not true, meaning the motor pin is low. That means the shade is open and not moving. In that case, we want the shade to close. So a button press in that situation, we'll send the close command. The next else statement is what will happen if the first if statement is false. That means the cover entity is not in the open state. So if it's not open, but the motor pin that spins the motor in the other direction is on, then the shade is moving. So a button press will send the stop command. And finally, if the cover is not open, and neither of the motor pins are on, then a button press will send the open command. Okay, I totally understand if your eyes glazed over during that. So here's a demonstration of how it works. Now I'm gonna try the push button. Haven't actually tested it. <laughs> okay, so it was down. I had to hold it for a second, but then it started going up. So, if I press it again, it should stop. If the shade is moving, a button press will stop it. Okay. Now, if I press it again, I think it'll go down. That's what it should do. If the shade is stopped, then a button press will move it towards whichever state it was last in. Next press, it should stop again. I struggled for a long time trying to figure out how to make this work. Finally, I found a great example in the ESP Home cookbook page. So if you've created something cool with ESP Home, please contribute to the documentation so others, like me, can benefit from your genius. This controller is an H-bridge. That means it can reverse the polarity of the power wires to the motor to make it spin in the opposite direction. With pin IN1 high or on, and pin IN2 low or off, the motor spins in one direction. If you reverse those, making pin IN1 low and pin IN2 high, then the motor spins in the other direction. 
To control the direction of the motor with ESP Home, I'm going to use the template cover component. I'm actually going to create two cover entities for each window because I want one to include a timer so it will open the shades completely or close them completely based on the timer. But I also want the ability to open them partially. Of course, you have to have your shades installed before you can accurately measure how long it takes. When you create a template cover in ESP Home, you first define the platform. The name is what will display on the Home Assistant UI. The ID is necessary so we can reference this entity in the Lambda we created for the push button. The most important parts are the actions. You get to define three actions, open, close, and stop. For open, I want IN1 high or on, and IN2 low or off. To close the shades, those pin states are reversed. And for stop, I set them both to off. In the entry without the timer, I also want to be able to press either the up or the down button anytime. So to make sure I can always have both up and down buttons available, I'm not going to include anything that would set the state as open or closed. And I'm using the assumed state true option. In my other cover entry, I need to give it a different name and ID. Then I'm adding a delay of 99 seconds to the open and close actions. After the delay, I'm setting whichever pin was on back to off so the motor will stop turning. I want this entity to track the state of the curtain. That is, are they open or are they closed? Without something like end stop switches to verify the state as open or closed, I can set optimistic true. That will change the state when I press one of the direction buttons. I think that's it. It's demo time. Okay, I'm gonna test the full window controls. So it should go all the way down. 99 seconds. Cross your fingers. <laughs> it worked! Woo! Okay, I'm gonna put it up, uh, but I know the problem is gonna be telescoping. It's gonna, it's gonna start to bunch up. But it did get the state of the window right, so that's good. Okay, up it goes, 99 seconds up. I'm gonna help it stay straight. Back down. So the telescoping is more a factor of my inability to make a curtain than with the mechanical mechanism. That part's all right. But getting the curtain exactly straight on the rod is not my forte. I can control it with partial now too. So partial up and partial down. I can stop it part way and go back down. But if I do that, then my full control up and full control down will be off. So I don't want to hit my full control button that does the 99 seconds up and 99 seconds down unless I'm exactly sure that I'm all the way down or all the way up. Well, that's it. That actually turned out to be not as hard as I thought it was going to be. That's a nice surprise. I'm very happy with the motors, the motor controller, uh, ESP Home, and the integration into Home System. Those are all perfect. Building the shade myself and trying to get it lined up so that it doesn't telescope, that needs a little work. That's probably a good reason to buy an already built shade and then just add the motorized and automated parts to it, rather than try and make your own shade.
If you like this video and want to see more like it, I try and put these out as often as I can, which has turned out to be about once a month. But I also do live streams every week on Sunday, and then sometimes during the week when I can squeeze in the time. If you like this kind of project and you want to chat with me or other people that also like these projects, come join us on Discord or Facebook. And be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so that you'll get a notification whenever I start a live stream or upload a new video. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.